hi shells i hope this is not coming too late i was able to put this up on time but just in case i hope it helps now i looked at the picture you sent that's actually crinoline not organza so thank you hannah for helping me answer her on that point and then the crinoline should be at least four they, they come in different size sizes different widths so the crinoline should be at least four inches to five inches wide that's what i could deduce from the picture that's how wide your crinoline should be that's basically what they use just crinoline so i'm going to show you how to place it on the outfit itself now i went to jemima usunde's page to check out the fabric the dress itself and get more um, hints on the details and i noticed that it was just skin net at the top and the fabric at the bottom that's what it is so everything you see there is patchwork and that detail so they use the fabric to create patchwork on the borders just like that and then they set the pattern that you're asking me to show you how to place so i'm going to show you how to place that pattern now and get the look in that picture okay so we're going to play pretend and pretend that this is actually a finished front of the bodice so let's say we've put a breast cup we've done everything necessary and now we want to put that detail so to put the detail you're going to use crinoline but i do not have crinoline now so i'm going to use this strap this strip of um what am i saying this strip of color gum to as a sample to show you how to work with it so basically you're going to create a line marking the path that the um, detail will follow and then along those lines or between those lines rather you create your zigzag which is where your crinoline the path your crinoline will follow so this is what it will look like the two lines curved towards the center of the chest like in the picture and then the zigzags inside are the parts that your crinoline will follow create this part with tailor's chalk so it is easy to clean off and does not ruin your work it also will be preferable if you do this on the fabric that you've not yet turned with lining so you do this on the fabric and then you turn with lining so that all the sewing with the zigzag will not show at the back if you can't however you can turn with lining first and then do the zigzag on top of both the lining and the fabric so i'm going to show you now how to follow that part using your crinoline you start here and you sew from here to where the zigzag stops then you fold along the line that you've already drawn And then you sew fold again and you sew so you continue like that all the way to the top i'm going to go off camera now to do it and then i'll come back and show you what it looks like okay so this is what we have if you want it to be fuller remember those zigzag did this is them if you want it fuller then this should be closer that your zigzag should not be as wide as mine it should be closer like this i did mine like this now if you want yours to be closer you can make it smaller that's smaller distance between them very small distance see what i mean that if you do it that way now you have it fuller because mine is not as full as the one in the picture This is color gum, so it's heavy and it's pulling down, but with crinoline now it will stand. And what else? When you're sewing this, so it's very tiny, less than a quarter of an inch, like really, really tiny. Like I said, you start from the bottom and work your way all the way to the top. It's be preferable to do this before you turn with your lining so that this whole mess does not show on the lining. But if you can, if you can't rather, you can wait till when you've turned with the lining before you do all this. So that's it basically. 